Welcome to the second uh, Co-Talks Conference e-commerce special here in Berlin. Um, I was uh, invited to give you like the welcome speech. I'm the uh, um, founder and co-CEO of um, Spryker Systems. Uh, we are uh, we are trying to give you like a um, nice conference set up here together with About You from Hamburg. Um, and I'm very happy that we are welcoming 600 guests here today and um, tomorrow. Um, actually, the first talk is not really a talk. It's just uh, um, uh, a little bit about the org here and uh, some hints how you can survive the Co-Talks conference here the next day. So I'm going to start with the most important slide for this day. That's a food slide. Last year, there were like two or three attendants uh, uh, almost starving to death, only eating the uh, nachos here from the bar. But there's like two food stations here on the uh, campus outside of the building. Um, I think one food station is called Kessel House, and the other, uh, I don't know, I forgot the name. Huh? Palais, yeah. Food is the same in both food stations. So, but uh, just for lunch and all the big uh, for the big breaks, you can take your food um, outside the building on the um, on the um, on the other side um, of the building. Um, another very important um, org information is that you can win hoverboards, drones, tablets, and all the other stuff. Uh, you can use your uh, um, your your badge um, and. Visit the sponsor stands, and there you can. Uh, there you have to answer some questions, and you have to. I think you have to uh, accumulate like five points. You have to answer like five questions. Um, there's some rumors that you can get more points on the Spryker stand. I don't know if this is true. Might be. You have to find out. Uh, but it's a very nice game. It worked pretty well last year for everybody, for uh, the people at the stands, for the attendees, and the prices are really nice. We have 600, plus 600 people. We have already an appointment for the next year's commerce um, special, and um, we are very happy to get your feedback on this year's and last year's commerce special. So we are, it helps us a lot to, um, to set up the program. And uh, um, I'd like to I'd like to give you some advice uh, regarding the birthday of Boris. He's a co my co-CEO of Spryker System. It's his birthday today. He worked like uh, uh, he's working day and night. He's not here yet, so don't clap, don't sing. Uh, I think his uh, his train is uh, is late, an hour late or so. But uh, uh, if you see him here at the conference, this is Boris. Like, just say happy birthday, Boris, and he he's gonna like he's gonna freak out. And don't tell him I taught you. So uh, that's interesting. So most important company for this conference and for this kind of setup of the conference is actually um, Amazon. Why? Um, most of you know that the conference is uh, um, organized a little bit, not 100% developer focus, but like developer and product management people and some business people. Um, and there's such a high, um, uh, such, such an interest in, in e-commerce and e-commerce tech uh, during the last years uh, in this industry, in this scene, because actually of Amazon. And some of you might know my e-commerce blog, customzone.de. I'm writing a lot about Amazon. And this is like the... General merchandising vol uh, volume um, Amazon is uh, Amazon has um, generated in 2016. So they are somewhere between 200 and 250 billion already in general merchandise um, um, handled through the Amazon ecosystem, and they are growing somewhere between 15 to 25 percent. So thanks to Amazon, they are absorbing every year 20 to 50 billion euros or billion dollars in the ecosystem. And this means that all the companies around Amazon, all companies which are attacked in their core business, needs to refocus from boring old analog e-commerce models to more tech-driven models. And that's the reason, though. Without Amazon, nobody would invest in such an amount, in such a manner we are seeing right now um, in this market. So clap for Amazon. It's not only your company where most of you are probably uh, getting all the goods um, online, but because of this grows and we don't expect any slowdown in growth in the next years, there will be hundreds of billions shifted into uh, tech uh, uh, in, uh, in e-commerce and in the industry um, um, over the next over the course of next years. And there's another helpful company in the market, which is called um, Alibaba. They're kind of an Amazon on steroids. Uh, um, the um, Alibaba's uh, um, uh, business um, involves something like uh, PayPal, it's called Alipay and WeChat and other businesses, but there's a 
kind of Cyber Monday, uh, Black Friday event in China at the 11th of November. And this is the general merchandising volume, the revenue at this day. So in last year, 11th November, they were able to manage almost 18 billion euro general merchandising value in one day. So when we show this to managers of um, other companies, they're saying, oh, well, we thought our 200 million per year business is big, but it's, so the rules are changing. That's very interesting. That's very helpful, actually, for you, because more focus is, uh, is given to the uh, technical capabilities of, um, of retailers, of manufacturers, of um, automobile manufacturing um, companies, and this is like driven from the outside. This is driven by Amazon and by Alibaba. There's no manager. I've never met a manager um, with a an, with an, uh, uh, normal career in marketing and logistics and purchasing who was happy to, to, uh, to, to start the next big IT project. There was never, I've never seen a manager uh, uh, after a big ERP uh, project saying, that was so great, so wonderful, I'd like to do it again. So nobody is, nobody is willing to do it, but they need to do, thanks to these companies, and these companies are changing the rules. And I show most of these, uh, most of these people, like one video I found like last year from Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, um, because he's explaining how you need to act in such an environment, not only on the business side, on the business side but also on the entrepreneurial and technical side. So enjoy, uh, uh, probably some of you don't know Gary Vaynerchuk, he's, I googled him and he's an internet personality, that's his official uh, uh, title, but he was very successful in, uh, in a, a Vine, a Vine blog business on, on YouTube in the early 2000s and now he has a big agency uh, called um, Vayner Media, Media in, uh, in the US and he's uh, very often on keynotes, uh, for keynote speeches on on stages. So please enjoy how Gary is explaining to analog people uh, what they should do in such an environment. When you started doing your Facebook consultancy for clients, it was a very different environment. Yes. These, these channels change every week. You can construct a strategy and Facebook will change the goalposts. Pretty primarily paid now. What are you advising your clients? You mean like every other media platform well, in the world? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, well, yes, you do know. TV Here's, is I mean, very, is TV? It's no, but you, no, no, I mean, you, no, I don't mean it changes, which I agree with. I mean, everybody got so emotional that you have to pay for Facebook, right? They, they flipped the rug from underneath us. It used to be organic. Everything is pay to play, and more importantly, it's effective. So while people still reconciled with their feelings, the best executors and practitioners disproportionately took value of the underpriced marketplace that it created. As far as changing the goalposts and things of that nature, so did TV at first. You used to do sponsorship. Ed Sullivan's show was brought to you by Lincoln Town Car. Then somebody came up with the model of the 30 second ad and the market moved. We're in the beginning, they're changing. Tough luck, like the market's hard. Nobody gives a shit about you. Like the end, like, nobody, like you know how pissed I am that social media came along? I had digital figured out. I built a big ass business on it. I loved SEO. Like I was all about banner retargeting. I followed your asses until you gave up and bought wine for free. I mean, I did it. I had it. It was good. Like you know how fun it was for me with YouTube? YouTube was four months old when I started Wine Library TV. Tons of people were watching me. Like I loved it. Like, like this is exhausting. I'm pissed. Like fuck, now we have like, Really, we have animated fucking selfie things like rainbows are coming out of my mouth? I get it. Like, like you've gotta keep up with this shit 24 seven. I'm getting old, I turned 40 in November, I'm pissed. But nobody cares. Like sorry fucking Poland Springs. Nobody cares that the world is moving. That's what's gonna happen and it's our job to figure out how to bring value to those people to do what we want them to do. And that's just the market. That's, look, some dude bought 8,000 horses before the car was invented. He lost. <laughs> right? Like, like the market moved on him. The, the price of a horse declined. And, and, so, and so to sit around and be upset that innovation's moving and you wish it was the way it was is fine. You're more than welcome. It's just a, it's a proxy to losing. Good lesson. The guy at Poland Springs didn't pay to sponsor that. <laughs> um, all right, who's got... There's two very interesting learnings here from what, uh, from what Gary said. Actually, the one learning is that 
in a market environment where we are, where we are in, there's no, there's no tool that can help you with risk management. You, you need to move. And that's not only true for the business side, though there's no tool saying that a marketplace strategy, a shop strategy, a whatever strategy is helpful for, for your business in the future. It's all also true for the technical side. Nobody knows actually which kind of microservice versus monolith versus PHP versus, versus Python uh, discussion is true. The only thing actually to manage and to be successful in such an environment is to learn very, very fast. And another learning here, and this is a much more, uh, a much more important learning, not only for me, but for, uh, for all people in, in, in those companies, is that the know-how which he gathered in his very successful years in the early 2000s YouTube is worthless today. The know-how we have gathered like five years before or 10 years before in like SEO or in a specific programming language or in a specific tool is worthless. You need to relearn and rethink everything again and again and again. And that's not that's not only the business side. It's the same here for the tech side. And it's uh, and um, it, it ha this video and this view on the world is helping me a lot to understand the future challenges. And this leads to a very interesting op observation. When we are working together with companies, we are seeing uh, two types of comp companies today. We see uh, Analog companies, which do have like a, it's the, the, right, um, the right circle here, which do have like a product or service in their core. They are a manufacturing, manufacturer of a product or they are a service company. And this company, this product is handled by people in marketing, uh, logistics, um, uh, after sales, um, all the stuff. And for them, IT is just a, a, a a thing which is handled out of the basement from the IT manager, or in Germany, the EDV Verantwortlicher. And um, the most, uh, most important IT thing they have for the outside world is their website. And those companies are totally different from the companies that have evolved in the last years here in Germany, like in About You, or in Zalando, or in Amazon. Those companies, they do have code and data in their core. That's their core asset. That's why Zalando and About You are saying, we are not a fashion company, or we are not a fashion platform, but we are a tech platform. We are selling fashion, but we can sell everything. These companies are managed by different kinds of people. They, are, uh, um, they have like more, much more um, code and data people uh, in their organization. And everything which was important before for the old companies, or for the analog companies, and marketing and logistics, that's only uh, um, um, secondary stuff in those companies. And as long as the ambition level is big enough and bold enough, those companies prosper in, in, in the market environments where uh, we are in. If you're like, strip away the ambition level of a digital company, uh, just take a look at IOL or Yahoo. They're like, they, they are going out of the market very, very fast. And this is not good versus bad. That's just two different types of companies, just two different types of business model. And there's no transition paths between those companies. And that's actually the discussions we are involved in in the last years and months. Uh, um, the, uh, that's the most discussions we are involved in because sometimes the so-called transformation strategies don't work because there's no easy path from the right side to the left side. And um, that's actually where I'm very, very um, excited about a lot of talks here today and tomorrow because um, there are a lot, of, um, a lot of talks where people are trying to help us understand how you can, how you can uh, uh, rebuild the former website cable network IT EDV team to a more code and data-driven uh, team, which like, moves then from the basement and the core of the company. That's like a big, big stretch today for most company. And, give you, like, and I want to give you like, one, uh, one very easy example, and uh, that's my last chart here for the, uh, uh, for the um, entry speech. Um, just... That's, that's uh, like the most discussed chart in our slide set from Spryker. Just uh, think back uh, to the relaunch uh, projects uh, before the iPhone. The most important question, the most important challenge we had back then was, will the new website look good on a 19-inch screen and then on a 24-inch screen? And is the uptime more than 99%? That was the most important question back then, and maybe a little bit SEO, SEA optimization. Then with the iPhone, all these mobile first, where those uh, uh, um, uh, desktop 
um, discussion started and then the tablet was in, uh, uh, introduced into the market. I don't know when the starting time from the iPad was. I think it, it was 2011 or 2010. And today we are seeing like new devices and thanks to Amazon Echo and uh, Google Home, even devices which don't need a screen anymore. And in this world, in this screen-free world, which will be, from my perspective, that's my perception, the, uh, the dominant use case in the next, like, maybe in five years, maybe in six years, maybe in three years, but I don't expect my seven-year-old son to learn how to order a product on, uh, um, on a tablet or on a monitor anymore. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it, I will explain him, like, in five years from now, how we used to go to a computer to order stuff online. It doesn't make any sense in a, in a, in a, in a screen-free screen world. But now, if you like, it's a discussion about the when. When will, when will uh, the, the voice world be important in our ecosystem, in our environment? But now think back, what kind of uh, resources, what kind of know-how from the 2010 to 2013 uh, environment challenges are important in this world? Almost none. This, the SEO competency, the UX uh, competences the, uh, the people had, which were so important to find out how to manage a website for uh, how, to, how to do uh, um, uh, um, responsive websites. That's not an important skill anymore. It needs to be relearned. So even people that were like the kings of the IT department or the online marketing department uh, six or seven years ago, their knowledge is not useful or it's used less even in, uh, in, in, this, in this environment. And that's very important to understand. And this is, there's no, you're bad, you're, uh, you're good um, uh, uh, decision here. It's everybody, not only the management, uh, not only the business side, even on the developer side, there needs to be a relearning on an everyday basis. And what we want to do with the Cotox conference with this kind of format is like to help to relearn, help to understand what other people have learned in this transition path. How can you, uh, how can you manage your company, your tech stack to be as flexible enough to, uh, uh, to possibly answer the challenges from tomorrow? Um, and then I think if you're open-minded and free enough to, to accept this, to accept an environment where it's impossible to decide for an IT strategy today that will help you with your business in like five years, that's very, very helpful to uh, make your companies uh, um, or your businesses or your startups um, fast enough to uh, stay alive. That's actually the environment we are, uh, we are in. Um, I've actually forgot to mention the most important uh, people here for the conference, those actually responsible for organizing. Sitting here in, in the front with, uh, with Heike and Aline, you can maybe, you can clap for them, they are here. <laughs> I only got the job to uh, uh, say some words here and I have like an, an, an interview at like, uh, 2, 2 p.m. I think here at this stage, I'm, I'm not sure. but. Um, Please keep this in mind, keep these learnings in, uh, in mind. Uh, um, our learning is like to, we, we even have to be much more humble than we have used to be in the, in the last year. We have to understand that there's no, no easy strategy, uh, not from a business side, not from a tech side uh, in this environment. We need to know that everybody, even those people that, were, that are today, the code and data kings in the core need to relearn and we need to understand how what kind of new capabilities uh, will be needed in the future uh, for the next circle, whatever it will uh, um, uh, look like. Um, whenever you have questions, you can um, ask all the, all the people with the Cotox t-shirt or ask me or ask Boris. And don't forget to uh, say happy birthday to Boris when you met him. Uh, um, and that's it, actually, from my side. Um, as I show in every management uh, 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 keynote, the, the general assumption and the general, uh, the general um, the general um, outcome is actually good luck in this environment to understand the market, to understand the technical, uh, uh, the technical stuff that is, that, is, that is going on. But the good thing is actually we do have all capabilities. We do have the freedom to, um, to, to use the market in our, uh, in our interest. And um, that's why I'm very, very excited for the next two days uh, um, to see what you've learned, what, uh, what other people have learned, and uh, what their uh, recommendation is um, how it's going to be going on. Thank you very much.